uh, good evening to all uh, can someone please tell me whether you can hear me we can hear you okay perfect right uh, okay we'll start the another lecture under the theme of pemsa alumni giving a helping hand according to the the final years uh, who are sitting the exam in march in the next month according to their request we thought i thought of doing uh, this topic because in uh, for all uh, the 15 16 batch as well for them for their information in uh, obsen gaini oski it composed of 10 oskis there will be nine sort of uh, structured sit down oskis and the rest the one the last one is uh, oski where we are assessing communication and skills so so according to their request Uh, according to their request uh, i thought of doing this to address that particular oski okay i suppose uh, you can see my screen and it is moving yes sir yes sir so now you are in my second slide no yes sir have it moved to the second slide from the topic title yes, yes yes okay right you know what we as examiners what we are experiencing uh is this on your right is the the candidate on your left is the role player or the uh the simulated patient or the actress right so here you have to perform the oski in front of an examiner right examiner is a bit away from you two that means uh, the candidate and the role player actress and examiner is 100% neutral no communication with the examiner but again you people are coming and asking question from the examiner but examiner is you know like parkinson parkinson patient expressionless no talking nothing because examiner has been given with the marking scheme the he or she is taking uh, the points which you are addressing during that particular 10 minutes <laughs> so what you are at the end of something sometimes the role player or the actress or the patient is utterly confused because of several reasons i will discuss that right this is not very big issue big task very simple thing we are giving very simple scenarios scenarios that you are facing as a house officer right there are advanced or skills for post graduates but this is a simple scenario day to day work from the ward right so in this brief discussion or the lecture i'll be discussing the general principles this is not a lecture in communication and counseling right please clearly understand uh, uh the psychiatry people or counselors uh, that type this is not a that type of lecture i am just giving a brief introduction to tackle that particular oski in the final mbbs that's all but the the principle that we are learning will be applied for your rest of the career and then uh, i will discuss what is the general structure of the oski 
and at the end we'll discuss say four or five scenarios so what are the principles first of all read the question and understand what is the task given to you right most of the time you people don't understand what is asked in the question you know this is you are under pressure under stress uh, we give one minute to read the question but you don't understand what is asked that is just because of uh, you are under pressure and under stress so please read the question and understand uh, the what is that you have been asked to perform sometimes there may be say if you take one one question one scenario we can ask two different questions as an example say uh, as example say some fertile couple sometime question may be talk to the uh, talk to the female partner that means take a history and proceed accord accordingly sometimes the question may be the sub, uh, the scenario is of fertility but the question is she has been admitted for laparoscopy and chromotubation or dye test take the consent same time the same sub fertility scenario the uterus may be she has had the laparoscopy and found to have bilateral block tubes or found to have endometriosis she is about to discharge talk to her so in one scenario there can be several tasks so you have to understand what is asked to perform then what you do people do is you go just sit and start the discussion first of all greet the patient patient or the role player depending on the time of the day good morning good afternoon good evening most probably will should be good morning or good afternoon and introduce yourself <coughs> right what you are doing is you introduce saying my name is so and so and i am finally a medical student no in your question your task is given say you are the gynecology ward house officer so take the consent for a uh, from a patient who is waiting for my mectomy so introduce yourself uh, your discussion is in english and sometimes you people are coming and starting from singhal right this is your uh, communication counseling or station is english right the patients can understand in english and they can communicate in english the role players they are actresses huh? they are not real patients so introduce yourself as dr so and so and i am the gynecology ward house officer and always check whether you are talking to the correct patient right because if you are going to break a bad news something like a malignancy so the identity and the divulging of the information to the correct patient is utterly important otherwise you are giving a wrong diag another diagnosis to a wrong patient uh, patient then have a good start depending on the task obviously and always start with open questions and you have to listen to the things that patient is 
mentioning to you the active listening is important because we have trained the actresses or the role players accordingly so according to the things that she is telling you have to proceed accordingly so active listening is important and if your task is so take the history gather information the active listening is very important and especially in a scenario you know the actress is a play, uh, patient right so some some scenarios like you know uh, scenario like uh, malignancy you have to show empathy and while you are communicating you have to reflect back and we call it paraphrasing say patient is saying uh i am having very heavy bleeding chaniru chaniru uh paraphrasing is say if patient says i am having uh very heavy bleeding and i have to change 10 15 pads day you paraphrase is is that so uh, i can see how much you were suffering something like that so reflect back and paraphrase that shows that you are concerned about the patient symptom and another thing is you when you are giving information give a chunk and check for understanding otherwise <coughs> sorry otherwise you are giving a big amount of information without checking her understanding which is useless if you are talking throughout the oski it's a sort of negative point you have to give time for the patients to talk as well and express their ideas and concerns so give a chunk of information and check for understanding and use your verbal and nonverbal communications there your, your dialogue should be should not be monotonous there should be ups and downs and emphasis should be there and you know nonverbal communication skills and always give time for clarifications and questions at the end of the 10 minutes if you have only you you have talked but not the patient it's a sort of negative point and at the end there should be a plan it depends on the task obviously the what is asked to perform in those key so when she is when uh when you are finishing the oski there should be a plan because this is a clinical scenario from with a patient and at the end summarize don't worry i am taking examples and explaining further as it goes as the lecture goes summarize means say mrs so and so you came with this problem uh, to the clinic about one month ago and we performed a womb wash and unfortunately the pathologist has seen a malignancy sorry not a malignancy you can't use medical terms a cancer in the lining of the womb so what we discuss was today uh what are we going to do next so we'll be performing the curative surgery and then uh, uh the team will decide the need for further treatment something like that is a summary okay then i will just brief what is the structure <coughs> of that particular communication counseling oski so usually uh, 
in a particular station there will be four four small tables you know the exam examination hall tables for a particular one one oski station this counseling oski there will be four tables two together one separately and another one separately the first separate table is the where you come and sit the question is pasted on the desk and you read the question <clears throat> then that is with the first bell then uh, after one minute there will be a second bell where you are moving to the the two tables location you sit in one uh, the table with the chair and the other other chair is <clears throat> the role play or the actress is sitting the other fourth table with the chair is bit, bit not close by bit far not very far the examiners with the marking scheme and the uh, the the mark sheets so examiners 100% neutral you don't need to look at the examiner no need to ask whether to start or not the bells gives the uh, the starting signal first bell you come and sit in the question paper desk read after one minute second bell you move to the role play actress they are also the question question is displayed if you forget from the first station the first desk is not never mind uh, when you are performing the oski the question is there next to you so the question is duplicated then your proper oski you know like anything we can divide into introduction body and the end and with the summary right introduction you greet say good morning usually we are giving the whole details right say we are giving the uh, name of the patient as well so you have to address with that name say mrs karwaratna so uh, is there in the question uh, your question may say 35 year old mrs karwaratna who is a school teacher coming admitting uh, to the gynecology ward blah 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 so you you greet saying good morning mrs karwaratna then you introduce yourself your task is given so i am you can say your name your real name and i am the gynecology ward house officer check the identity of the patient because you have done that already half way because when you address with the name patient will be nodding the head then it is sort of identity uh, check in the identity but you can cross check uh with the age something like that so cross check the identity whether you are talking to the correct patient it is one of the uh, most important principle in communication and counseling because you can't divulge information to a wrong patient and at the beginning you 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 explain the agenda for the oncoming 9 minutes or 10 minutes so that is the agenda is the task which has been asked to perform so mrs karuna ratna uh, i understand uh, you had the womb wash about 2 weeks ago and today you are here today to discuss the results of that and uh, to have a further plan of management shall we proceed Right. so something like that so that is the agenda now she is very clear that this is what is you are going to discuss with you and especially in a situation like breaking the bad news you have to get into the task straightly 
because of two reasons one is time factor you don't have much time to waste and the other thing is any patient not like is doesn't like to uh, hear you know the what you call indirect information patient wants to know the correct diagnosis whether it's a good or bad and uh, go to the next step the break break the bad news straight example unfortunately the pathologist has identified a cancer in the lining of your wound don't say uh, you your your uh, histology report is not normal it is abnormal then troll grace has been trained to us dr what is what do you mean by abnormal what do you mean by not normal right so get into the topic straightly so say that you are also unhappy unfortunately the pathologist has identified a cancer in the lining of the wound then give a pause for her reaction that's how abnormal and i'm not kicking the lights utterly the waste of time so that is the introduction uh shall i give a pause and uh ask for any questions up to now or even from the introduction any question is it clear up to so now so i have a question sir yeah sure sir so, uh when break, breaking a bad news do we have to uh, ask from patient with Does she like to have a family member with her, like something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming to that. It's good. I'm coming to that uh, when I'm discussing that break in the bad news scenario. It's called signposting. Yeah, I'm coming to that. Any other question? So first, I'm discussing the general structure. okay then we'll move to the body obviously the content of the body varies according to the oski or the task whatever it is go in organized manner uh someone is asking uh, do we have to speak in english or singhala as in the long case do we have to speak in english or singhala as in the long case i didn't get the question the person who typed the question in the chat box so what are you asking uh, in the long case uh, your communication with the patient is immaterial to us in your long case right obstetric long case or gynecology long case most of the time is singhala if patient is native language is tamil uh, we don't give uh, if she can't talk if she can't understand singhala in your exam right and you are performing in front of examiners obviously in english for this oski is 100% english do we have to speak in english or singhala as in the long case yeah that's what i can explain okay we'll move so your body should be organized manner as example uh say if a clinical scenario is given you go for history so it's information gathering 
and obviously you are not examining the patient here you are not performing the examination in those key in those key station but you can tell uh, now i gather this this information and then explain the plan i need to examine you i'll be examining you vaginally and uh, same time we will have to do a scan to have a look of your womb and ovaries and depending on that will come to a sort of plan of management and i need to assess your hemoglobin status for that i am ordering a full blood count and i am suspecting uh, there may be some problem with your thyroid gland so we'll do some blood test to assess your thyroid gland as well so information gathering history then examination and what is the investigation and what will be the treatment plan so go in order i can't give a general introduction general you know uh, sort of introduction to the body because uh, it's depending on the oski and always give a chunk of chunk of information and check for understanding otherwise only while talking 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 patient doesn't understand it always let the patient to talk and express her ideas we'll discuss uh, the examples will that with those examples will come to the proposed key structure again then the end i don't want uh, this picture like scenario at the end right you are drowned here the thing is say writing was key uh, the picture is given or the question is given 1.1 question is asked and you answer answer grip answer script there's a 1.1 space to answer and you are writing no one is observing but here you are you may be bit shy and panic and stressed because uh, there are two people observing you one is the role player actress and the examiner is there so it's it's a live station <coughs> that the writing was key you can write anything and come out no it the problem is when we are marking the oski and they says no the end to summarize as i explained how she came to the today's consultation uh, and what we discussed today and what is the plan of management in future or oh, next step what is the next step and in some scenarios even though we are giving lot of information to the patient she may take time to absorb and she may need for the information to refer later or read so you just act like i will give a view uh, this is a acting station like a drama so i will give a patient an information brochure to you to go home and read and just say uh, there are a lot of websites i will give a website ad addresses for you to if you have the internet access for you to go home and read so you can do your own research you can do your own read ready and some scenario like say now she have already helped plus like in a scenario like malignancy so give a contact details of the hospital for any emergency as a favor because now she is facing a big problem so she may need further help in future near future so i will give uh, the direct contact uh, number of our ward for any emergency for you to contact that shows that you are concerned about the patient that shows that you uh, shows you empathy and at the end if it is successful uh, oski station both should be able to walk away together right walk away together means patient is happy after your consultation 
and you are also happy that you have done your job. That's what meant by the walk away together. And you you score the maximum marks. Any question up to now? That's the general structure. Uh, there's another question. Uh, how long do we for this? It's 10 minutes. Your key is 10 minutes. That is communication counseling was key. Then another one is asked, do we get procedure stations like demonstration of IUCD insertion, Jadel insertion? Yes. So all those, the, there will be 10 of case in the final MBBS. This is separate. And we have this OSCE on a separate day or separate session. The rest of the nine OSCEs at a stretch, you, you must have done uh, what you call a uh, so it's going right round. That nine nose case at a stretch, five minutes per each. Right. That will be in a separate session. We do get a uh, separate time allocation for this communication counseling OSCE from the dean's office, from the exam unit. Separate day or separate ha half session. That's how. Uh, for writing structured questions, uh, procedure, there will be only one procedure for that particular uh, nine OSCE stations, like IUCD insertion, Jadel insertion, uh, taking a pipel biopsy, I think, uh, taking a pap smear. So that performing OSCE will be included within that nine. This is separate communication and counsel. <clears throat> Any other question? This is very easy, right? If you talk and if you especially what you call uh, girls are having 64 tactics, so if you have that non-verbal communication skills, boys learn from girls. So you are there. This communication counseling is checked because it is assessed in the exam. Because we, we most of the time we see, we observe that that skill is lacking. So it is very important for a, a good house officer. That is why it is checked in at final MBBS level. Sir, can we give our personal contact number in case of a man? Ah, <laughs> this, is, this is a drama, man. Okay. You give whatever the number. Just say, I will, mean, no, no, no need to rip, uh, give you a, say, no, double, double seven three, something like that. Say, uh, examiner should be able to hear say that I will give don't say any of your personal number this is a government hospital don't say I will give a, just say I will give a uh, contact number for you to contact our team in an emergency just say like that we are not checking very minor minor details I will give a number for you to contact our team, is the team, no? You are the house officer. Uh, to contact in any emergency. Then another question. The 10 minutes, how it divides the right? 10 minutes when they, uh, all together 10 minutes, one minute you are reading the question in a separate table and a uh, the chair. And nine minutes actual performing those key. No, no. Another one is asking, sir, do we have to present summary to the examiner or summarize all the things to the patient? Examiner is 100% neutral. Examiner doesn't look at you. You should not look at the examiner. Your dialogue examiner is just 
examiner is just there to give marks. That's all. He's not participating at all. He's just, just observing your gesture, your verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and he's sticking the marking scheme. Right? So your end, your summary is again with your patient. Your summarization is to the patient, not to the examiner. Examiner is neutral, examiner is not looking at no marks for uh, communication with the uh, examiner. So in performing OSCE, do we get real patients? No. So if you are giving, say, IUCD insertion, it's a dummy. Jadel insertion, it's a dummy. Pipel or PEP, it's a dummy. No real patients. Real patient encounter, you don't have real patient encounter unless in your long case. Here again, communication counseling was key. role players, actresses. Right. We bring them down from Kalambu, right? So all the nice girls, actresses, we are bringing to a final MBBS. And this is usually the last day of your exam. Okay. In that case, if you want, you can you can give you the personal number. Someone asked. No? Another question. Uh, the, are the heading of the game under which you get marks? Okay. Question. Yes. The person who asks have, is going to study the exam. Uh, then prepare for the exam accordingly. Good approach. Right. Basically, you know, marking scheme. Yeah. Generally, you know, obviously, I have to give a general answer because the marking scheme definitely varies with the particular scheme or the task. Generally, you have to talk loud because examiner is not very close to you during this COVID again, a bit far. So unless you talk loud to the patient or to the role player, examiner will not hear, right? And your, from, your first impression is very important, right? Because examiner will give from the marks from the gut feeling, from the impression. So first impression. So sit comfortably, have a nice start, good interaction, greet the patient and introduce yourself like that. So your verbal communication skill, nonverbal communication skills, you know, your empathy, whether you are organized and uh, how was your interaction and how was your uh, body, was it very organized manner and whether you summarize at the end, whether you came to a sort of plan of management. Those are the general entries that we give marks. Another question, I have not finished the lecture. People are typing questions like nothing. I am, I am the, I, I have to discuss some more in scenario, the scenarios. I, we just gave the interaction, the principles and the structure. I'm discussing examples. Uh, uh, sir, uh, are all the instructions to patients given in English? Yes, 100% English. No communication in singular. Actresses are talking and communicating with you in English. No singha at all, no Tamil at all. No Bhutani at all, right? Uh, are we being checked for accuracy of knowledge that we are providing or is it just communication? It's both. But, you know, I would say communication and counseling will be the most important thing which is assessed here because others, your factual knowledge, theory knowledge has been assessed in different components. But here, you know, you can't say, uh, uh, you know, you say it's advanced ovarian malignancy, I will remove only one ovary and I will preserve the uterus and the rest of the other ovary which is wrong, right? So you, 
but what we are mainly assessing is the communication skill you don't need to know the you know mcq theory knowledge here if you know the general approach general superficial knowledge you can score the highest here and the question so do we have to demonstrate myrene insertion in performance or in performing or skill or just copa ucd a myrena we are not giving because uh, you know it is expensive if you are giving it is copa ucd myrena will be 25030 you people are not worth enough to open uh, you know sometimes you are running uh, four five circles at a at a time say nine or key stations if you are putting five cycles we can accommodate 45 students at a time right so uh, we have to open five myrenas which is not cost effective so it is definitely if it is iulcd insertion is copper so is there any bell ringing within nine minutes to take an idea about remaining time no no. There will be only three bills starting one minute, ten minutes. Uh, so, do we get a piece of paper before the station in case we need to draw something? Yes. If you need to draw something, if you need to draw an explain to the patient, which is a very good thing in communication counseling was key uh, we are giving a paper for you to use exactly now the question uh there are two examiners in this panel no oski only one examiner sir when uh, when she asks a question and we don't know the exact answer or can't remember can i say i will consult my uh, can I say I will consult my seniors and get back to you? Yes, definitely. Mrs. Karwaratna, I am really sorry. Uh, I am not confident to answer that question or I, I don't think uh, I am not the correct person to answer that question. It is uh, beyond my knowledge. I am the house officer. So I will ask from my uh, seniors or I will ask from my consultant who is responsible for your care and I will let you know. There is a very good approach. So how the marks are allocated for this OSCE and the other OSCEs is same. Same percentage. Same weight. Uh, so we are doing performing OSCE. Should we explain the procedure while performing? Yes, it, depending on the task. Say, if you ask to demonstrate a UCD inser insertion, uh, the dummy is in front of you. Uh, so if your task is perform a UCD insertion. Right? Sometimes uh, it may be a bit vast. Something like that patient is there, then take the consent, explain the procedure and do the insertion, something like that. Uh, then you tell to the examiner, the question is very clear usually, tell to the examiner uh, what are the things that you are checking before the insertion. Right. LE, say you see in LMP, uh, urine pregnancy test, blah, blah. Then uh, perform the procedure with the dummy so you can talk. So first I will load the IUCD. Then uh, prepare the patient, explain and take, and take the verbal consent. Prepare the patient. I will do this as a trial procedure, lithotomy or dorsal procedure. Uh, chaperone, good illumination, uh, cast course by well, self retaining specular, visualize the cervix, catch the cervix with the valsalam, uh, use the uterine sound to assess the direction and the length of the uterus, insert it, 
then uh, withdraw, adjust the IUCD according to that length, insert, and uh, stabilize the inner, inner sheet, pull the, not pushing, pull the outer sheet that will be unloaded inside the room and take the both together, cut the thread. While you are performing, you just describe. It's nothing more. It's good that otherwise you are just doing uh, the uh, examiner is also neutral. You are not talking. The, uh, the, the, the station is becoming boring. Okay. Good. Lot of questions. Okay, we'll discuss, I think, four or five scenarios. Right. Very common scenario as a HO that you are experiencing or we are facing. Taking consent for a surgery. Uh, another one is asking, uh, is there only one examiner in this panel? Yes, I told earlier. Uh, there will be only one examiner. Long cases, there will be two examiners. So performing was key, like I use it insertion, one examiner. Communication counseling was key, only one examiner. Because long cases, only long cases, only first say examiners are reluctant to count. <laughs> So we are finding very difficult to, uh, you know, couple say in the galaxy and go and cup and again go to go and get away. Okay. Um, right. Taking consent. Very basic, fundamental loss key. As a house officer, you should be able to deal and score the maximum. Maybe any gynecological surgery, obstetric procedure like a C-section, abdominal hysterectomy, vaginal hysterectomy, myomectomy, simple ERPC, DNC. Okay. Any uh, gynecological procedure. Right. So in a scenario like this, now I'm mentioning only the specific things, right? You go read the question. Uh, move to the role player or the actress, sit, greet, introduce, right? Then tell your agenda. This is Silva. Uh, I am here to take the consent for your surgery that you are going to undergo tomorrow. I suppose that you know. Uh, uh, now our team has diagnosed a fibroid in your uterus, and we are uh, going. What we what we are going to remove uh, the fibroid, and my task is to take the consent for that. Are you happy? Shall I proceed? You know uh, this fibroid was troubling to you. You had tummy pain. You had heavy periods. So the benefits will be you will be out of those symptoms after the surgery and if you are planning for surgery then you can have a break and go for a pregnancy so that is the obvious thing and it's my job or duty to post, uh, to explain you the possible but not common uncommon or rare complications as well you know whenever we do a surgery there's a risk of bleeding or infections and especially here you know this fibroid has a very good blood supply this fibroid surgery is notorious to bleed sometimes but don't worry our team is ready to uh, our team is ready to tackle that so we prepare blood before the surgery in case of surgery we uh, in case of bleeding we transfuse blood and we are ready for that and uh, my consultant and the team is do a lot of things to minimize the bleeding during the surgery. However, 
usually uh, we take the consent for removal of the womb as well but don't worry this is done only as a life saving procedure right. because now at that point you are under general anesthesia we can't talk to you that's why i am explaining beforehand if there is a torrential bleeding which is going to be a threat to your life as a life saving procedure the team is doing the removal of the womb which you call as hysterectomy but it is a very rare complication due to benefits first and uh, tell possible complications next usually what you people are doing you are starting when you are asked to take the consent you are starting the complications you tend to forget the benefits in a patient is not giving consent for those if you are only doing the complication oh okay, role play has been trained to us doctor uh, are you are you telling that uh, uh, i will be facing only the complication but there won't be anything gained from the surgery then why should i undergo this surgery so role players has been trained to ask like that right at the same time you know uh, if you are going for uh, one treatment mode before take, when you are taking the consent you have to explain other possible option other available options as well say take a u b h m b Management with tranexamic acid, then uh, hormonal treatment, COCP, LNG, IUS, and if patient is waiting for hysterectomy, so has she tried those things? So you have to explain other available options for that particular condition. And sometimes we are not checking exactly the last point. Usually, the consent taking procedure is a two stage. If I telling an example, um, say we are planning surgeries in the clinic, we have to ideally we have to explain the procedure, the things that I explain, and uh, take the consent. And we send her home from the clinic after giving a date for the elective surgery. Then she can go and do her own reading, own research, or own information gathering. Right. It's called sort of cooling period. Then she's coming back to the surgery where we double confirm the consent. Right. So if there is any time, any opportunity to address that as well, say uh, we will be discussing these things again when you get admitted or in the theater. So we'll reconfirm the consent. That just to show that uh, you know the consent taking procedure is ideally two stage because we have to leave a gap for the patient to do her own research. That is the principle. But we are not uh, strictly checking that from undergraduates. Okay, that is uh, taking consent for a procedure for a surgery anything uh, very common. Hysterectomy, VHNR, uh, TH, myomectomy, elective C-section, which has been given in the past. Uh, another one is asking uh, the one examiner be either an internal or external yes uh, you can have uh, that uh, there will be only one examiner maybe internal maybe external as well so in case of aub or hmb usually we try the medical management initially and if it's not effective we do the surgical management so do we need to tell again yes do we need to tell this again about the medical management. Yes, because in, in a consent taking procedure, even though she had those treatment options in the past, it is one principle, one basic uh, thing to tell her the 
ഓക്കെ <laughs> right uh next scenario breaking bad news there will be a lot of possible scenarios you know like uh, breaking bad news of a malignancy cesarean hysterectomy for a major massive obstetric hemorrhage or major pph right before moving to that there's another question so at the end do we have to ask from the patient would you like to give her consent yes you can ask do you have any questions to uh, ask do you need any further explanations uh if not you can uh, give the consent or sometimes uh, or if you need you can buy time you can take time you can read you can do your own research and you can give the consent later just to address like that in two stage procedure right what sir what is the relevance of this patient being unmarried uh, how to address that the relevance is uh, we have to uh, preserve the uterus we haven't given whether she has marital plans or not no whatever it is just to uh, you know just to emphasize the severity say uh, fibroid uterus in 45 years of age uh, mother of three we are not even though we are planning for his uh, myomectomy in any case with minimal bd we can proceed into a hysterectomy no? but here being unmarried is just to emphasize uh, we have to preserve the his uh, the uterus so your role player actress may ask cross questions not very deep or embarrassing questions or very you know difficult questions but she may need to uh, get a, you know sort of guarantee from you she may tell doctor i am going to marry next year and uh, i need to preserve my womb something like that so just to just address that those are difficult cross questions so if we tell anything wrong regarding the procedure will it deduct marks usually not unless you do a real bull uh you know mangarki advance ovarian ca kada unilateral oophorectomy ki what yes otherwise we don't we mainly check the not the the theory knowledge or the factual knowledge but the communication and counseling skills so do we have to ask about the knowledge of the patient about the particular condition yes definitely you have to that is fundamental thing i think i i forgot to mention check the baseline so the principle sorry it's good that you highlighted that cross the base uh, cross the uh, check the baseline what is the understanding of the condition up to now another one is asking can patient change their decision at the theater just forget that typical uh, there's no difficult scenarios we don't give uh whatever it is what you have to understand is uh consenting procedure can be a two stage give the time uh, to the patient for her to do on reading and research uh if the patient is start crying can we console her by keeping a hand over her shoulder don't never touch the patient never touch the patient just give a pause you know we have trained the role player in a such a way if you are hitting to the correct point she will stop crying right so if you are uh, say we'll discuss that thing with the break came back okay the last question uh, kavi sekar is asking 
how to comfort a patient who is crying okay right say um, histology report of a malignancy say um, we'll take a cervical biopsy scenario i took already i took dnc endometrial sampling and uh, where it has become a cancer uh now we'll take a cervical biopsy and a cervical ca okay interaction is same sometimes you may not say good morning mrs silva you just say hello mrs silva uh can i confirm your full name mrs nalini silva yes yes doctor uh you are uh 40 years old correct uh my name is dr so and so i am the house of the in the gynecology ward today uh, i suppose that you had a uh, you know small tissue biopsy from your neck of the womb and today here you are to discuss you are here to discuss the histology results now it's a breaking bad news now the sign posting thing comes one of the one of your uh, one of the patient just us at the beginning of the lecture today so sign posting is you ask are you alone do you have anyone to come and sit with you sign posting calling podi angavana right the information that you are not you are giving to divulge is not good it's called sign posting and then say mrs nalini silva unfortunately pathologist has found a cancer in your neck of the womb and i am really sorry to divulge that information to you at this point then she is crying give a pause right pause kele din ina nama ema denne pa right unless you hit the particular point she is crying she has been trained to cry okay uh say mrs silva i can see that you are really upset but uh now we have to discuss what are we going to do next how are we going to help you how are you going to come out from this cancer say something like that then patient is back on the track okay and give a hope anything you know there is a silver wire so give the good sign even though uh, uh the pathology says the cancer i don't think it has it has spreaded much if you are taking the endometrial what i am always saying is a lining of the womb and it has a it's like a cancer in the box it has a very good thick outer wall cover so because of that it is not going to spread to other organs in your body so after doing the complete surgery it is usually curative so give a hope and the this general discussion is in low tone right not like you know after delivery of after delivery of a newborn you are just congratulating congratulating your woman wow congratulations on your baby boy or something like that right so it's a low tone <coughs> so don't uh, the question that uh kavi sekara uh, don't touch the patient uh it's not professional but do verbal learn show verbal learn and verbal communication skills empathize give a pause pause maximum say you know few minute few seconds ah huh? 10 15 20 seconds huh? not more than that
So at what time do we have to get consent for hysterectomy for PPH? No, no, no. Sir, what if patient refuses? No, no, no. The breaking bad news uh, here, what I mentioned was uh, patient already had a hysterectomy under general anesthesia uh, because of as a life-saving measure. Now we are breaking the bad news after recovery. Right? Sorry, I think my idea was is not conveyed here. Here my idea was she had a PPA, uh, cesarean delivery. Then she was taken to the theater again uh, because of bleeding. Then other measures were taken, devascularization, uh, arterial ligation, B links. And at the end, under general anesthesia, we had to do a hysterectomy. And following day after recovery, it's breaking the bad news. So sort of debriefing, I would say it's debriefing. So that is the scenario that I wanted to highlight. Okay, sorry for the, you know, my error. So if the patient has advanced cancer, can we still give a hope? No. But say, uh, we are doing our best. If I go dark, more difficult scenario, then in there where you will be facing and uh, finding difficult to tackle. That is for postgraduates. If so, if it is, comes or appears, uh, say, give a sort of hope, at least she's not going to die tomorrow. We are doing our best in the surgery and the cancer cancer doctors, where we call as uh, oncologists, whom we call as oncologists, they will give, you know, cancer treatment and, you know, that radiotherapy, blah, blah, uh, to address the, you know, spread of the cancer. Right. So they will act on the, on the cancer on the other organs. So you will live much longer, something like that. May not be curative, but give a hope. Uh, how to end the break in the bad news? It is just declaring the treatment options. End the break in the bad news. How are we going to end? Okay. Ten. So a summarization, Mrs. Pereira, today, uh, about three weeks ago, because you had that uh, abnormal bleeding from your womb through the vagina, we did the biopsy uh, from the lining of your womb. And today you came to discuss the results. Unfortunately, as we discussed already, there's a cancer in the lining of the womb. And today we discuss the next step. We are giving an immediate date for the surgery to complete surgery. We are where we are going to remove your womb and ovaries. Uh, we will be performing an MRI test to assess the spread of the disease, depending on. Then, uh, most of the time, that will be a curative thing. However, if need, uh, we are taking the cancer specialist doctor's opinion as well, just to highlight the MDT, right? And uh, uh, yes, that is the plan. Do you have any questions to ask? And say, I'm really sorry again uh, about this cancer in your womb. However, uh, I, will, I I hope that it will be curable. So, uh, till you get admitted for the complete surgery, if there's any need, I will give a contact number for you to contact the team in case of emergency. Something like that. Again, same summary and have a plan of management. That's how to end. Sir, so if the patient starts crying, can we offer her some tissues? Yes, definitely. I don't think we will be able to provide uh, facial tissues, but you just act. 
you know, like in drama, just uh, act like that. You are offering, uh, uh, I, uh, Mrs. Pereira, I can see you are really upset. Here, some tissues. Uh, are you okay? Is it okay if I proceed? Now we have to discuss the next step of management. You come back to the track again, even though she's crying. Then if you hit to the point, she will stop crying. Okay, another scenario, advising a patient on discharge. Again, a house officer's task. Going home after uncomplicated C-section. Going home following a gynecological surgery, TH, VHNR, Mavaventan. Here, it's post-op recovery. The additional thing or important thing will be you have to educate the patient about red flag symptoms where she need to seek medical advice attention immediately bleeding secondary hemorrhage or secondary pph if it is c-section or vaginal delivery then uh, we can give a, a highly uncomplicated patient who had a, a vaginal delivery and going home she had episiotomy at the time of delivery so advice okay so red flag symptoms coming are coming here. Secondary bleeding, secondary PPH, infections, uh, DVT, something like that. Because obstetrics in a in any major gynecological surgery, those are becoming a risk factors for venous thrombolysis. <coughs> so unilateral, red, sole, and painful leg, uh, cough. Difficulty in breathing with pulmonary embolism, something like that. See, if you are taking, and there are, you have to address maybe not only one entity, say postpartum, uncomplicated C section, no uncomplicated vaginal delivery going home. You have to advise about red flag symptoms, the cesarean section wound care or the episiotomy care, then breastfeeding. You can't forget then uh, you know contraception or spacing for the next pregnancy pelvic flow exercises right so those entities should be addressed so go in an open mind then gynecological surgery any vaginal surgery say safety training is there any vaginal surgery so avoid uh sexual intercourse for six weeks any gynecological major surgery avoid heavy work for six weeks but uh, she can do minor day-to-day -day activities wound care and even you have to mention that she has to come to the clinic after two to three weeks to review the histology okay so if if the surgery is th and bso and you have to address Bilateral oophorectomy, you have to address the hydrogenic menopause. Just tell her, you may get these symptoms. In that case, you have to uh, come back because uh, that those are menopausal symptoms. In that case, if it is really troublesome symptoms, we can start hormone replacement therapy. So those things should be addressed. If you are if you are occupied, if you are talking, and if you are letting the patient to talk as well, this nine minutes or 10 minutes running like nothing. Okay. It's very quick. Problem is if you get stuck. Don't think it's a very long duration. Um, 
another question so can we explain a medical term to the patient first and then use the medical term thereafter in the conversation will it be better to use casual language throughout yeah i would say casual language throughout right use uh, non medical terms sir can you tell us when the patient can have intercourse after cesarean section and vaginal delivery cesarean section nothing like that because uh, it's lower segment and uh, nothing is directly open into the vagina so whenever the couple is feeling comfortable they can have sex vaginal delivery again same the episiotomy it's not a big vaginal surgery like anterior colporophy posterior colporophy or a vaginal hysterectomy or repair uh, when the couple is feeling comfortable she will have lokia for one to two weeks no so just say uh, when you do when you are feeling comfortable can have vaginal sexual intercourse there is no time demarcation so you know okay managing a clinical scenario sometimes we can mimic a, a sort of history taking clinical scenario hmb patient aub patient subfertile female right you task may be talk to the patient and get the information and Uh, have a plan of management right so no clue has been given unless you ask from the patient right patient may say uh, husband was asuspermic so it is not given in the uh, question so that information you have to grab from the patient it is a bit difficult but again i am emphasizing we are not giving difficult scenarios right we want all of you to pass not to fail is is it necessary to tell the procedure incision etc what is that uh what she may what he or she may be asking is it is is it necessary to explain the uh, incision and the procedure yes when you are taking the consent you have to briefly explain the procedure of the uh, surgery briefly in lay terms in the consenting process that is another important principle the procedure in brief in lay terms so you get to practice beforehand say not yet in the uh, in abdominal hysterectomy uh, uh they be putting the transfer so no transfer so you can go and show someone's mic is on uh yeah then we are going into the tummy and uh, we remove the uterus but as there is no problem with the ovaries we are removing the womb as there are no problem with the ovaries we are preserving we are planning to preserve the ovaries so you will not lose hormones you will not be menopause and after removing the womb we are looking for Uh, bleeding and after that uh, we are closing the tummy briefly explain the procedure <clears throat> right so managing the clinical scenario 
so that that uh, particular diagnosis or the clue for diagnosis which may, may not be given in the uh, the printed question that information is given to the patient so you have to grab that from the patient so that is if it is a clinical scenario you know, it's just like your long case you are taking the history your long case also you are trying to find a cause no the particular pathology of a particular symptom so you start from history then explain hey, i am going to explain we'll be doing these investigations and depending on that we'll have a sort of plan of management Right, some more questions. So is OSP component added to theory component or clinical component in the exam? OSP. Added to the uh, this thing theory. Added to the theory. Okay, that's how we you know we add marks or we do the calculations. Then uh, another question: uh, We have to use English even in performing OSCE. Performing OSCE. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you are performing uh, on a dummy, you know, and communication with the examiner. So you, you, you are uh, question, your task may be tell the examiner what are you going to check before you start in the procedure. So I use the decision. I will ask the LMP. I will check for urine HCG. So you have to tell those things to the uh, this thing uh, examiner. So all thing, all the things are in English, right? Because MBBS in uh, uh, the is given in English now. So uh, when taking the history in a clinical scenario, are we taking just a summary regarding the problem? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or do we need to ask questions about the past medical history, social history? No, no. You are given, if you are giving a clinical scenario, I told, I am emphasizing. We are not going giving a difficult scenario, which a brief scenario, and you have to take a brief summary. Right? Okay. No need to because it's difficult to take a, uh, that sort of detailed history within the nine minutes. So it's a very brief history. Uh, another question uh, out of 100 in the whole examination how much weight does the oski carry as a person sorry i can't remember i can't remember exactly the percentages or the weight i have to check it with the you know with our department or the exam department Sir, so is it okay to check the time while talking to the patient? That's fine. That's fine. You can just, you know, without looking at the watch all uh, all the time, you can just check time while talking to the patient. No uh harm. Majority of questions are from seniors, M14. Uh, only a few questions from juniors. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? What's the time now? Yeah, nine 
tadi so we uh, i just put this slide i hope you can you all can see uh, we don't have this type of questions right the questions are very clear to the point the task is very clear the problem is you people don't understand maybe because of the adrenaline surge or you haven't practiced answering or reading questions and definitely we don't have ask this type of questions uh, some more questions uh, so when we are taking history to what extent should we take the history uh that is very brief history i can't say it, it don't worry it's very the, your task is very clear right so your task is take a very brief history and uh, come to a plan of management and when the then the thing is we have been trained the actress or the role player so she is still in the main problem so see she is still in the main problem so address that don't look for other two three or four uh, coexisting problems one is enough address that because it's very straightforward for undergraduates so 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 the previous question can we use a digital watch to exam can no we are not checking whether it's um, digital or cut watch or I don't, i don't think i haven't seen that we are checking the yeah. unless it is sophisticated where you can carry data can use so if the patient has been diagnosed with an advanced ea can we offer to arrange for a second opinion as a way of giving her some half it's not second opinion it's mdd right second just forget the second opinion it is multidisciplinary team approach right and then it becomes sort of second opinion so don't say it's second opinion i will i will summon a meeting with the experts myself you also oh, you are house officer my consultant we will be arranging a team involving you as the patient my consultant as the gynecologist and we will ask the cancer doctor to come and sit with you and the nurse and your family members then we'll uh, decide what is the best treatment option for you then you are giving hope for hope to her so second opinion is mdd so as example when we breaking a bad news is it okay to thank the patient at the end why are you thanking you can just thank thank for coming to the clinic today something like that Yeah. Are there nice now? Okay. For the seniors but not for juniors. Uh don't worry. Exam is easy. You have done you have done uh, your job and you have studied very hard. so it's easy to pass right you are smarter than you think or you look and you will do fine at the end and uh, this is you know fingers crossed in gynecologists manner way with extra good luck for you people and uh, till exam till the period of out of bounds you can come to the hospital at any time uh, and uh, and uh, if you need any help can ask and another question is it okay to shake hand no no not to shake hand 
it's more english way but especially during the covid don't do that uh, yeah don't say can't never because of the covid just forget it okay fingers crossed all of you will pass that sir if you need any further help let me know uh, how can we tell a patient about palliative management if it is advanced then uh, say if it is very advanced don't worry mrs nanakara uh, uh, will do our maximum to comfort your life uh say we will give maximum painkillers i will uh, get the help from our pain team and uh, if you say if you are passing if you are facing any difficulty in passing urine we'll get the surgeon's opinion we'll put you a catheter so palliative care and we'll arrange uh, very the good nutrition to you something like that so if you want to address palliation address like that okay right up people are saying thank you and get well soon <laughs> how you people are aware that i am not well <laughs> anyway thank you <laughs>